<laughs> hey, so, so listen, I mean, you were obviously extremely upset when the press conference started, but then you kind of came to George's defense a little bit there. Can you kind of tell well, us what went through your head? I wasn't that I was coming to his defense. He, you know, he's, you can tell he's fucked up. You guys keep asking him the same question. How many times are we going to ask him the same question before he, before he says it? You can do that to me. You know I'll crack. Uh, you know, but. Did you just go talk to him today? I did. I'm in a better mood now. What Nothing. <laughs> about it, about his problems. His problems aren't as bad as he thinks they are. Did he explain to you what the problems are? He did. Are they family related? They're personal problems, you know. Do you think you helped convince him? I, I don't know. I'm not Dr. Uh, Oz or anything or whatever that guy's name is. But, you know, I talked to him. Lorenzo's still in there talking to him. Um, yeah, we'll get through this. Are you confident that he won't come back? confident that he will yeah what's his demeanor like you know he, one of the things about George St. Peter one of the things that makes George as great as he is 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 things drive him crazy little things drive him nuts like like the whole obsession thing that he was talking about he's very much that way and he's obsessing over something else right now that you know might seem like the end of the world but it's not is he related to MMA at all that's it I'm done <laughs> Do you think that any of that uh, played a part in his performance tonight? It seemed like he was very overwhelmed at the end. And I mean, do you think any of that played into his performance? I mean, talking to him now would be tough to say no, but you know, he got his ass whooped tonight. That's what happened. You does, know, whether does, that was it or that wasn't it, I don't know. But the result was. Just hearing what he said, does it change your position at all on how you feel about you know him whether he won or lost? Won to, not not whether he won or lost, but you know. Him wanting to time off well, and all that, because mm -hmm. obviously you were pretty harsh and saying, "Come on, you you don't." Get well, I just yeah. Well, you don't. Right. Not harsh. It's, I'm being honest. I'm, it's reality, you know. Uh, I, I and you know it's funny because that the guy that asked the NASCAR question, um, you know, uh, that tonight was one of those things that he should have just bit his tongue and said, you know, hey, this happened, that happened, whatever. Yeah, he probably should have, and he thinks that too. He said, but he just said, he, he just said, I just got my head punched in. Okay, I'm. He said, I didn't know what round it was. I didn't know the fight was over when it was over. You know, he was he was hurt badly. He was hurt badly, and you know, there, I, I, how anybody Dave Meltzer could score that fight that that they think he won. That kid is hurt. He's hurt right now. I mean, his face is his face is busted up. His head isn't right. You know, he got, he got beat up tonight. Um, did, did, you have a, did, did you feel like you got any better feel for the timetable he may be looking at for a return? No. I, I think I think everything's going to be fine. I think everything's going to roll just like it always does. Also, David, did everybody... uh, you know, I've heard you have negative uh, uh, or frustrating nights before, but tonight you were pretty openly critical of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Yeah. Do you feel like tonight represented kind of a significant downgrade in your opinion? I've had, yeah, I've had, I, you know, I've just been having consistent – you know, I, I told some of you I had a real bad one at the Ultimate Fighter the other day. It's just it's the, the, they've been very consistently bad. You know, it's just it's, it's, it's at a point now where, you know, hey, listen, when the Mayweather thing happened, right, the governor jumped right in there, but the governor needs to really fix this. The governor needs to fix this situation. With that said, David, does it make an argument from a promotional standpoint to the Open? I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know what the answer is. The answer is to get in there and fix the problem. The problem is the judges and some of these referees. That's the problem. I know we talked about this a little in the presser, but would you prefer Johnny to wait, wait for George and get an immediate rematch, or do you think Johnny should stay busy? Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a waiting situation. I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be like that. Is that the fight then? Is it going to be GSP and Johnny too when GSP gets everything figured out? Yeah. We might have figured everything out tonight. <laughs> Dana, did uh, did anybody have any inkling that George had these things going on in his head? I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't know about this till I left the press conference with him. You know, <coughs> George St. Pierre is one of these guys that I I told you guys <coughs> at the pre-fight. I mean, I couldn't say enough good things about George St. Pierre, and even tonight, I think Johnny Hendricks won that fight. I think George St. Pierre got beat up tonight, and I think Johnny won. And that's not George's fault. It's not George's fault that George won. Not. It seems to be similar to like some of the things that Anderson Silva was saying about the pressures of being the champion and us just not getting how difficult that role is. Well, if this is—I mean, these are pressures. 
I deal with guys in this company all the time with so much shit that you guys don't even know. You know, these guys all have personal problems and all these other things. You know, how long has George St. Pierre been here? Eight, nine years? This is the first time George St. Pierre has had a problem. But it happens. He's a human being. They're all human beings. And, and you know, they all get issues sometimes that need to be dealt with. And so, usually me. So the, time <laughs> so the timeline that you talked to him about is within reason that he would come back and face Johnny again, meaning, you know, he's not going to be out for a year or something yeah. crazy. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's, uh, you know, he's very emotional about some shit that's going on with him right now, and uh, it's really not that bad. But to him it is. To him it's like the end of the world. But he's, he's, a, he's a, a mentally strong guy. He's a hardworking guy. He's, he's an honest guy. He's a good guy. He'll, he'll get it. He'll get it straightened out. Uh, you know, I was thinking, I, that's what I was sitting there saying, you know, and of course Canada has his back and saying, am I being a little harsh to George St. Pierre? Um, you know, it's like, what the fuck could be so bad that you think you got to take off and, and leave for a while? It can't be a health problem because you wouldn't be fighting and, and things like that. And, but to him, to him it was a big deal and, and it was driving him crazy. I think Canada just said maybe you should listen to what his problem was before jumping on him. Oh, okay. I know it was something like that. <laughs> How'd you feel about Rashad and Chael's fight? Um, it was pretty quick. Pretty quick. Rashad, uh, you know, that's the Rashad. Rashad, first of all, look at the shape Rashad was in. Best shape you've seen him in in a long time. And uh, he went in there and handled business. That's the way Rashad needs to start fighting again. Again, and another another head issue, you know. Rashad uh, needed to, to fall in love with training and winning and trying to be the best again. Would you like to see Chael go back down to 185? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Chael's, Chael's in a position where Chael can do whatever the hell Chael wants to do. Chael could retire tomorrow, and he's doing fine. With that said, I mean, he said all the right things leading up to this fight, but do you feel like maybe it was a mistake for him to have another fight lined up, the ultimate fighter lined up doing the TV stuff? Do you think that factored in? Number four versus number six? <laughs> you know what I mean? It looked like a mismatch tonight, but it was number four versus number six. Uh, Dan and George, it'll go down as a W, but what do you think this fight does to George? Does it do anything to George's legacy, or does that depend on when he comes back and what he does in the rematch? Well, yeah, I think so. You know, when you talk about guys' legacies, in two years, people won't even remember that, oh, that one, one, one uh, everybody thought he lost that fight, you know? Well, the ones that, that, that affect the legacy are like the John Jones, Matt Hamill fights. You know what I mean? This one won't affect George St. Pierre. It's a W. It's a win. He said he did not win this fight tonight, but the judges said he did. And uh, it's not George's fault. Did you have a conversation with Josh Koscheck? That's three losses in a row for him. Yeah, Josh, uh, Josh, you know, I was crazy. The fight was going on and there was stuff happening. And he sent me a huge text, you know. And his text uh, sounded a little bit like retirement, um, which I don't ever mess with guys when they talk about retirement but might be a little premature for Josh too. I think Josh is still one of the most talented guys out there. He fought a beast who was ready to go tonight and Josh hurt him tonight. Josh hurt him and uh, I, I, you know, I love Koscheck. I love that kid. I love the way he fights. I love his attitude. Guy gets booed out of the arena every time he comes in but he still goes in and fights his ass off and he's a tough kid and he's, he's a, you know, when you're standing in the octagon, you're looking across, and Josh is standing there, you know you're in for a fight. So while some people would get cut after three in a row, you're leaving it up to him, or? I'm leaving, you know, if, i got to talk to him and see if that was a retirement text that he was sending me. Um, listen, and people are going to say what they're going to say. i got a soft spot for the, for the season one guys, you know. You walked into the cage after that fight, and you did have a moment with Josh. Yeah. Can you share what I what never do said? that, you know, and, and – uh, uh, you know, I was worried about him because he got he got knocked out bad. You know, I just wanted to go in and make sure he was all right. Daniel, you, when people start talking about retirement, athletes, when you start talking about it, and it's been around George, do you think it, it's time to George isn't talking about retiring. George isn't talking about retiring. His guys were saying, the guy who was like his mentor said, I'd love to see George win this fight and retire. That's who made that statement. George never made that statement. And the thing that, that George is all bugged out about is so far from being about retiring and not wanting to fight anymore. The thing about retirement, this isn't baseball, man. 
This isn't croquet. This is fighting. This is where you go in against guys who are mean, nasty, and hungry and want to win. And if you even, if retiring even crosses your mind, you should retire. How big, how big was tonight for Robbie Lawler to? Huge. I was thinking back about you know him and Nick Diaz when he fought him at UFC 47. He yep. was the big prodigy, the big you know, prospect. Loses that fight, never quite came back from that. Now here he is, beat a top three welterweight. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, for him, right? huge. And the thing is about Robbie Lawler, you know, I'm the one that brought Robbie Lawler into the UFC, and I, you know, I was 100 percent behind this kid when he came in. Robbie Lawler, when he was younger, all he gave a shit about was making money. I want to fight where whoever is going to pay me the most money. I need money. And, you know, there were so many times that Robbie and I had talked throughout the years when he fought for other organizations. And he'd be like, I'm, I'm, I, th I want to come back and fight for you guys. I want to come back and, and fight in the UFC. And I said, kid, it makes no sense. I'm not going to pay you what these guys are paying you. It doesn't make sense here. I said, Th they, they need you over there, and they got to pay you whatever the hell... You know, they got to pay you to keep you. And he was like, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, now we bought Strike Force, and he's back in the UFC, and he's a completely different animal. Not even about money. He doesn't even talk about money anymore. Now it's about winning that title. You know, as he's getting older now, he's not this young, crazy kid anymore. He's got a wife. He's got kids. You know, and now it's, it's about before this opportunity goes away, I want to take a run at the title. And, and he's doing it, man. Very impressive. What did you think of his post-fight speech right there where he awesome. said that? I mean, I thought that was – because Robbie's usually a pretty quiet guy, but right. he kind of came out of himself He's No, he's, he's a completely different person than he used to be, you know. I've always had a great relationship with Robbie, and, you know, I've been a fan, whether he was with us or with somebody else. Um, and yeah, I'm happy for him. I'm really happy for him. Uh, you, uh, you know, the, the result aside, um, you talked a lot how, how George has gotten very strong mentally uh, in, in the cage. Um, with everything that Hendricks is putting on him tonight, and he kept coming forward. No, that's Men yeah. mentally how you know how impressive. That's it a was. great point. No, that's a great point. And George was done. What was the second round? That fight was over. He was about to be knocked out. And you know, Johnny's seventy percent or whatever the hell he's talking about. You know, he almost it seems like he didn't go after that. He had him hurt really bad, and then started wrestling with him again. It was real weird. Um, but George took that big, sh took a lot of big shots. I was just sitting this close to him, talking to him. His face is worse than I've ever seen it. The and the only face I've ever seen worse than his was Junior Dos Santos's. Um, he he got beat up tonight. He got hurt many times. Um, he didn't even know where he was. He didn't even know what the hell was going on. And he kept coming forward. And he and he and he uh, he fought his ass off. And wh when he said, when he sat here and said. I gave it everything I had tonight. He did. First True. Time fought Hughes, couldn't even look him. Uh, couldn't even look him in the eye. Yep. When, uh, no, he he he, uh, <coughs> he took some shots tonight. Yeah, in that moment um, when he rocked them, they they were they were kind of clinching, and then Yamasaki stopped the fight to give him his mouthpiece. Do you think it was, it was appropriate to do that because it gave George uh, a second or two to regain his bearings? Well, they weren't a clinch. They weren't a clinch. It's such a crucial point of the fight. I right? agree. Yeah, I agree. That's one of those, you know, believe me, if, if I thought a ref did something wrong, you know, I'd be the first one to say it. It's one of those moments. It's, it's, a, ju it's a ref's discretion on, on when you put a mouthpiece back into the, you know, if, if they were still fighting and the, and the action was continuing, they ended up in a clinch and, and Mazzagatti decided to put the mouth. You saw Hendricks was like, never mind the water, just give me the damn mouthpiece. I'll throw it back in my mouth. Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't blame Mazzagatti for that. Uh, it's actually Yamasaki. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did I fucking just say that? <laughs> it's just automatic. Yeah, right. What's your take on um, Roy McDonald just coming off the last fight? You were unhappy with this fight. It, it's for such a young guy. It, it seems like he's just he's not he's not letting it go. He seems very tentative out there. Do you agree? Yeah, he doesn't let it go. I can't tell if he doesn't let it go or he's just not that one well-rounded. He's just very one-dimensional. He has this style that of nullifying a fight. He has a style of just making the action stop. And, uh, you know, I think that a lot of guys, he bugs them out and gets in their head when he starts doing that and they feel like they can't win and it ends up being the staring competition. All the way leading up to this fight, I kept saying, this is the perfect fight for, for, for McDonald because 
we're going to find out what he's really got in this fight because Robbie Lawler is going to take it to him. Robbie Lawler has the style of wrestling and hands and, and the power to hurt you that you're going to have to fight completely different than you have been. That's why I really love this fight. David, in the past, there was only one Brazilian on the card, Talos Leitches, and it seems like with that being the 20th I think we used them all up over the last uh, three <laughs> fights yeah, down in Brazil. Asking. It seems, in a way, you know, they're such a big part of what the UFC is now. It seems sort of surprising that there was only one. Yeah, I think we used them all. <laughs> Dana, yeah, I know you were uh, going to have that, the, this particular event. Originally, I hoped to have it at Madison Square Garden. Can you give me a comment on the culinary union's proxy war against the UFC and what happens next for getting into New York? What event was this one was going to be there? Yeah, I'd heard that you guys had hoped to have it at Madison Square Garden. Hmm. Is that right? Yeah, you that said was it. the talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was the big dream. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the Culinary Union is on the, uh, you know, they're, they're awful quiet lately because they're uh, they're trying to renew all their contracts on the script on the strip, so they're they're a little busy and haven't been uh, haven't been messing with us. But we'll hear from them as soon as they get their contracts on the strip done. I'm sure we'll start hearing from those idiots again. What are you guys gonna do next to get into New York? Just keep doing what we're doing. Just keep plugging along. When New York happens, it'll happen. I don't care anymore. Dana, you uh, you announced on the uh, on Fox Sports and the Fighter and the Kid podcast you're adding the 115 pound women's division. Why now? How soon? What details can you give us? Just we're we're just working on it. I, I really don't have any details yet, but but we're 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 interested in it and and uh, trying to figure out how to do it. So sometime next year, I assume. Like, yeah. But it's definitely going to happen. Well, yeah. I like it. I'm working on it. How soon do you hope to, I mean, is this up to like Sean Shelby and Joe Silva leaving them time to like start signing the fighters? Or no. It's up to me and Lorenzo. We're working on it right now. Did you have a specific female that stood out to you that you wanted to bring the division in for a reason? No, it's a, it's a good division. It's it's full of talent and uh, we like it. Have you looked at buying Invicta or something to kind of merge with them and no. they have so much talent over there? No. I, I mean, I think, I mean, if... Uh, Invicta, it's, we can't, you can't just go up and buy up all these companies and, you know, make them go away. These companies need to exist. I mean, if, Vic, if Invicta went away, um, you know, it's, it's an outlet for women to, to get fights, get experience, get paid. You know, it, it would be, uh, it would not be good if that went away. With the success that you've seen in this, year, this season with the women <clears throat> against the men on the Ultimate Fighter, is there any chance that you do an all-women Ultimate Fighter? I mean, eventually. I mean, someday probably. But, you know, I don't think there's enough women to do, you know, First of all, when you, when you do the Ultimate Fighter, you got to go through medical testing. You got to go through background checks. I mean, by the time you, if you start with 50 guys, you end up with close to the 16. You know, um, so I, I don't know if that would be possible to do a an entire show with women. So would it be impossible to introduce the division that way? Um, yeah, through the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, it would be great. We know that you brought in the Ronda Rousey as the catalyst that brought in the women to begin with. Was there one moment, or, or was it the ultimate fighter? What was it that said it's time for a new division? What was that? Um, well, I started I started looking at some of the other women's divisions, and uh, that one was pretty good. Why not 145 pounds? Because that's not a good division. <laughs> <laughs> Dana, just but, so I... Sorry, go ahead. No, okay. Just so I have it right, uh, do you now, after talking to George... Uh, have in your mind some kind of time frame on when there might be a resolution. I think everything's cool. I think I, I think that listen. I, I'm not speaking for George here, but I just what I got from it. Everything's cool. He, he's he's freaked out about some things. It's, it's not that big of a deal. It is to him. You know, when when something happens to you and you're like, this is the end of the world. And I'm, you know, but uh, George St. Pierre is, 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 is a mentally strong kid. He'll get through this and. It's, so do you feel that I'm in a much better mood than I was 15 minutes ago. I was fucking yeah, miserable 15 minutes ago. Let me just if I can just follow on from that. Uh, do you get a, a, a sense from that then that he could be back in the normal rotation? Mm -hmm. I do. And you feel that he wants to have a rematch with him? Uh, he wants to fight. This isn't about fighting. It really isn't about fighting or retiring. You know, it was a personal problem that has him very, very upset right now. And... Uh, you know, I'm very confident he's going to work it out. So now you have a, a big rematch. Yep, we do. Did Eric you think about that Brian Eversole tonight? Uh, I didn't see that fight. I was getting dressed. Do you think? I mean, will he be back? Do you think? Or what happened? I mean, he lost. He lost. Yeah, I, I missed that fight. It was a good fight. No. He's very one sided. Yeah, very one sided. Yeah, I missed that fight. Um, 
I don't, I don't know. And you know some fighters can request, <coughs> excuse me, to not have uh, certain reps rep their um, their fights, like Brock famously did it with Mazagadi. As a promoter, can you can you request to not have certain judges work your shows or certain referees work your shows? It's just, you know how it works in Nevada. It's just, it's, uh, I mean, if that was the case, look at me. Look at what I've been saying forever and screaming about this forever. I mean, if that was the case, I, I mean, I, I, I could I be blaming myself because Said we didn't want this guy, but we want these guys. Problem is, as a promoter, <laughs> when, when the promoter is more concerned for the fighters than the commission, that's a problem. That's a problem. The, 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 the commission is here to protect the fighters from me. I'm a promoter. I'm taking their money and, and, and making sure George St. Pierre wins because he's our big money guy and we screw Johnny Hendricks. And, you know what I mean? That, that's what they're supposed to be there for. It is absolutely fucking insane when the promoter is trying to protect the fighters from the commission. You're you talking about this works against you in, in a sense because uh, the more you talk about it, like like Herb Dean was working tonight. How is Herb Dean not refereeing the main event? And the more you talk about it, the more they try to mess with you. Yeah, you there's no it. doubt about it. There, there, I am absolutely positive. You know, there's obviously some incompetence there, number one. But there's there's a fucking huge ego there. There's a huge ego that would rather just stick it to us than do what's right. There's no doubt about it. I, I absolutely 100% believe that. And I think many of you believe that, too. Well, so you talked about the governor stepping in. I know that you can't control the commission, but do you feel like you can lobby a little bit more? Or do any, is there anything you can do from your end other than, look at what other than I speak do. through us? Other than speak through I us. mean, look what I do. I mean, what else? What more could I do? And how much more? You know, obviously, when there's a huge boxing fight and these guys fuck up, Holy shit! The world stops, and we got to fix this thing. And you know, Pacquiao lost that fight, and, and it almost happened to Mayweather, in a fight he clearly won. You know, um, I just don't know what else needs to be done. To, to you know, it, it's unfortunate. You know, we have a great relationship with the MGM. We have a great relationship with Mandalay Bay. This is our hometown. This is where we live, and our athletic commission is the most, the, the most, it's the weakest commission in the country. But admittedly, you said it kind of made you hesitant to stay go. in Nevada. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so when you start looking, something? so when you start looking at next year's schedule, how many fights do you really want to do in Vegas? How about the Ultimate Fighter is here in Vegas? Is that you know, fight? and we we have to deal with that too. That a, would you would you uh, call for UFC fans to contact the governor on the UFC's behalf and express their concerns? Um. Uh, yeah, listen, the governor. I I think the governor of this state is very aware of what's going on with the athletic commission and now it's just a matter of getting it done rolling up your sleeves and getting in there and and, and making some things that there's a lot of work to do with would the athletic commission would you be opposed to fans contacting no do you get no. the sense that they show you the love that boxing is in the, the boxing controversy happened with mayweather it was a total outcry yeah do they show you that same kind of <coughs> no concern? absolutely not have you asked them why? they absolutely don't who Governor. Sure, I was talking to him yesterday, and uh, I don't talk to the fucking governor. <laughs> <laughs> you're friends with uh, Senator Reed? Yeah. What, you're, you're friends in high places? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't pick up the phone and call the governor. Lorenzo could. Lorenzo could. <coughs> governor don't want to talk to me. Does Lorenzo agree with you on all this? Like, is, is he Lorenzo is agrees 100%. Yeah. yeah, of course he does. Yeah, um, I mean, who doesn't agree with me? Is there somebody here? Seriously, if somebody doesn't agree with me, Tell me. I, I guess I would disagree that, that the Vegas Commission has had like a, like a long string of bad decisions in the UFC. I mean, I know that C.J. Ross had the Pacquiao card and she had the Mayweather card, but if you look back and at, at, at this commission's handling, and I know obviously there was a bad one on the Ultimate Fighter. There's, just there's always bad ones on the Ultimate Fighter. But I feel like every season been in any city, and this could have happened. Every season, it's almost getting to the point now. Where I'm sitting there, this is what's crazy. Like, I'll be at the Ultimate Fighter and I'll be sitting there going, I, I'm more curious of what the judges are going to do. I'm more curious of what they're going to do. Instead of, like, the fighting. I'm like, well, I can't fucking wait to see this one. It's almost become like this, I expect it. I absolutely expect it. Um, there's been tons of situations. Not just on the fights, but on the Ultimate Fighter. Every season there's there's tons of commission, you know, it's just crazy, man. And I, I hate to just keep beating the, you know, beating a dead horse, but it's like the Mazagati thing. I mean, 
we spend money, we, we, we pay money into the commission, and the commission pays for these, you know, they, they know that, that, that we think that Mazagati is, is completely, f we, we're, we're paying the commission the money to pay these people, fly somebody else in. You know that we don't love Mazagati, and it's not a personal vendetta, not because I don't like the guy, I don't know him, you know. I just think he, he's, he's, I don't think he's a good referee. And they know that, so why not give us somebody else? Why not fly in another ref from somewhere else or give us somebody else um, just to make us happy? You wouldn't have to hear us bitch. You wouldn't have to hear me talking about it. Why, why, would you not do, why wouldn't you do that? Because you're not going to fucking tell me what I'm going to do. That's why. Is that the way it's supposed to work? Is, is that fair? No, it's, 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 uh, it's embarrassing what it is. The other day we talked about Kane being injured and the fight with Verdun might be in jeopardy in April in Mexico. Goyito won his fight tonight, but there's not a lot of Mexicans on the roster. Could you remind us of, of the efforts to grow the sport there? Are, there? are you going to do a tough Mexico, or what else can we do to sort of grow that market? Because there's not enough Mexican fighters in the UFC yet, you know, maybe to build that fan base. We're working on tough Mexico. Um, <coughs> and uh, our television deal down there. Dana, this was a, a special cause for you. And <coughs> your partners uh, has what happened with with uh, the judging and the GSP tonight. What's your take on this evening? Yeah, it it it, it, it rained on our parade a little bit, you know. Um, yeah, it did. Do you have any news about the, uh, John Jones and Wilbur fight? Like you said, it's not gonna happen in the 170 then. No, we're still working on that too. What happened there? I mean, I just talked to you guys a couple days ago. I mean, nothing, nothing that drastic has changed. What happened? Like, why did he John Jones went back into the gym and still didn't and didn't feel good. Said his legs are still bothering him and his, uh, you know, uh, his eye is bothering him. So he, you know, he's still banged up from that fight. The fight wasn't that long ago. You know, a guy. It's like being in a car accident. And, you know. Division. Have you thought about what's uh, going to be Daniel Cormier's first fight at 205? No, we don't know yet. Uh, Bill. Bill. Huh? Bill Davis? Um, I don't know yet. I don't Maybe know. Rashad? On the, <laughs> on the, the Henderson Thompson, do you foresee that the winner of that's going to probably get Pettis when Pettis comes back, or is that presumptuous? Um, no, that, that that's uh, who knows. I mean. That kid's, you know how much the landscape's going to change before he gets back, you know what so I mean? He, he's having surgery, right? He's having surgery. He's having surgery in December. Yeah, back to Chow, we all know you hate Tito, but in certain ways, is he kind of like the modern day Tito where he's with all the promotion outside? And <laughs> no, he's actually says things that are smart. <laughs> he's actually a smart, intelligent guy, and when he talks, you actually understand what he's saying, and uh, the shit he says is... is worth listening to. There was nothing worse than sitting through a Tito Ortiz press conference and you guys just fucking would not stop asking him questions for his 30 minute rambles that made no sense. I, that used to drive me crazy. You know all the stuff that went on between me and Tito, the one thing that I am just, you don't even know. I'm so happy I don't have to have press conferences with that guy anymore. Well for myself and my brother, oh, dad, who did? he'd start talking and be like, what the fuck did he, nothing he said made sense. Ever. Okay, so no, he is no nowhere near Jail Sonnen. Well then I just specific to Jail is without all the outside stuff that he does to garner so much attention, you know, would he still be getting such high profile fights? Well he was ranked number number six. He was ranked number six in the world. Lost several of his last few fights though. He was ranked number six in the world and he just fought number four. You're, you're Tito and me right now. <laughs> Dana, you're you're Dana, making no sense over there. Dana, you, uh, you, you announced Benson and uh, Thompson. I saw TJ Grant was around this week, and did you talk to him? Have you guys I haven't. I haven't seen him, no. Do you know anything about when he's coming back? Has there been any update or mm -hmm. still nothing? Nope. Dana, totally understand why you never wanted to talk about Ben Askren before he was completely released, but I think you kind of surprised us this week by saying no interest whatsoever, considering he is a, a, a free agent at this point. Um, I mean, most of us have him ranked somewhere in the top ten. Obviously, you always talk about having the best. You should be more surprised that the company that he's champion for doesn't want him. That should surprise you more than me not want him. But why is it? Why is it shocking and surprising that I don't want him? The company who has him, that he's the champion and holds their belt, doesn't want him. 
I think that's the story, not me. You said you had some big plans uh, for the original owners and all the legends. We threw a big party over here next door. We had a party for those guys. We set up the whole, we had a whole ordeal for these guys over here. What was that? It was awesome. Today? Tonight, yeah, tonight. It was uh, started at six o'clock and then, uh, and then ended. That's why Lorenzo was still here. Went and grabbed Lorenzo and we went and talked to him because they were all. I don't know if you guys started. You heard the music in there and stuff. We we, we tricked that whole place out for them. Had a huge, um, huge dinner and and we had a bartender in there with drinks and you know turned the whole place into a lounge and there was a DJ and everybody went back there and you know. Some of the celebrities were back there, and I you know, just wanted to show, you know, make sure that those guys had like the greatest UFC event they could ever even dream of. Did they watch in the arena, or did they watch it from there? Yeah, they watched it in the arena. Okay. Did you hang out with them too? Yeah, yeah. We all got together from like six to six forty-five. Frank Lorenzo and I were with them and telling stories about the old UFC and. Some of those guys like Campbell McLaren and Isaac. And so, have you ever met those guys in person? First time. First I mean, I met I met Campbell before. Maybe about a month and a half ago, right. and then I met all the other guys tonight. Obviously, sure. Horian. Sure. What was that like for you? It was awesome. It was awesome. No, it was great. I I really wanted this uh, 20th anniversary to be about them, not it's about us. Horian's first show since '95. Yeah, he said some very nice things tonight. Uh, um, I think that there was this. Um, like I said, I, I think that the the guys who started this thing were always portrayed as bad guys. You know, like they, they, there's bad guys. They're not. These guys were good guys. They fought the, the they fought the fight for a long time to keep this thing alive until we were able to come in and and, and get it. And I think that there were uh, you know I think that there were some hard feelings between all of them, and I think there were some hard feelings between them and us and things like that that was completely unnecessary. And the timing for all of this stuff was perfect for the 20 year anniversary, you know? Like the, 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 the documentary, we did that documentary nine years ago. People wouldn't have gave a shit. It was like, uh, you know, they, we still, a lot of people still had bad feelings about the UFC and thought it wasn't a sport and all that stuff. This was the perfect time. The 20 year anniversary was great. And it just, it, 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 it was really important to me for these guys to come and be a part of this thing. Was Art Davey here? It, yeah, they were all here. Everybody was here except Bob Meyerowitz. You're a promoter. He's a promoter. Like he's like a throwback promoter. Yeah. You get, you get kind of a kick out. We had a blast. Yeah. We had a really good time. Um, <coughs> you know, the, the, they're all great guys, and uh, all unique in their own way. And, and and you know, I liked Mark Coleman's uh, um, quote in in the uh, documentary when he said, "The guys who used to own the UFC were fighters, and thank God they were, or I wouldn't have." You know, I wouldn't have been able to do what I did. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. And uh, we all wouldn't be here if those guys didn't fight the fight back in the day. Are you, uh, is that going to be prime time for the 28th show? For the 28th show, yes. With uh, Silva and Weidman or Ronda and Tater both? Or uh, it'll, be, it'll be Weidman and Silva. Hey, Dana, Nick Diaz was sitting behind us tonight in the press. <coughs> I mean, he didn't get those off of Ticketmaster or anything. So, uh um, any updates there? The relationship, obviously, you guys had kind of a, a weird back and forth this week. We always have a weird back and forth. There's never a like, <laughs> there's never a normal conversation or a normal deal. You know, Nick, uh, Nick hit me up and asked if he could have some tickets, so we figured it out. So no update on the fight. What I didn't want to do is this fight. There were tons of fighters that wanted tickets to the show, and I had to turn all these fighters down because this show was more about the, you know, these guys get to go to fights all the time. This 20th anniversary was for the, you know, the guys who started the sport, and you know, it was about them. Akiyama was a nice surprise guest behind us too. Did you have any conversations? Yeah, no. With what happened with that is I don't know what happened. He was in town and he called Lorenzo, and Lorenzo hooked him up. So no updates with him. You didn't get a chance to meet with him or anything. No. Did you and Dan Henderson work anything out this week? I know when we. Well, spoke I said hi to him tonight. I mean, <laughs> that's it. No, we haven't. Uh, I mean, we've been, we've been, we've been working on this show, and I was traveling. I, I didn't even get back here until Wednesday. Did you hear about Rampage? Uh, winning? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see it? No. I was going to ask if you were impressed, but... <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, what what is there to say? You guys know. You guys, Ariel just wants me to say something crazy so he can tweet it. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it is what it is. The guy's making money good for him. You know? 
What have you thought about Mark Coleman? Uh, I've heard a lot of, you know, kind of very little detail, but he's having a blast on the ultimate side of being a part of BJ's team. And I guess from what I've heard is like everyone loves him there. What do you think about Mark's involvement kind of being involved not only with the 20th anniversary, but he's on the entire season of the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, he's fantastic on the season of the Ultimate Fighter. He's uh, he's having a blast. He's been great. And uh, some goofy shit went down that normally I would handle, you know, the bad kind of stuff that I have to show up to the house. Well, I was busy today, so I called Coleman. <laughs> and I said, you got to handle this for me. Here's what's going on. Yeah? Can I say this? Well, what about this? What if I do that? I said, dude. Your fucking picture's hanging on the wall down there in the Hall of Fame. That's your house. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. I got this. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. You know, it was it was funny at the, at the Legends Q and A yesterday. Like a fan asked, you know, what about doing an Ultimate Fighter where you have like retired guys as coaches? Obviously, there wouldn't be a fight to to you know be hyping up. But does that appeal to you? No one, you know, putting Coleman in a situation like that. Do you think that could be something that could work? In yeah. Well, I think it's you know it's. You, you bring these guys in as assistant coaches underneath the, you know, the guys who are going to fight. But yeah, I mean, of course, and, you know, to have a guy like Coleman or, or, or Severn, you know, it, it would be awesome. You know, uh, what kind of a card uh, do you imagine for for Dallas? Is going to be Mexican American like what happened in Houston? Or? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm assuming that we would definitely have some some uh, some Mexican fighters on the card. Yeah. It, it could be um, if if Velasquez is healthy. I think if he's healthy, we're going to do Mexico. And, oh, well, Dallas is not an option. Well, I'd love to have him fight both if we could, but if I, <laughs> if I got to pick one, I'm picking Mexico. Because <laughs> it happened, you know, Mexico was, was closed and had a... I completely understand. Yes, sir. Would you want Johnny to fight in Dallas? Um, sure, yeah, that wouldn't be bad either. Well, the gentleman laid it out here today, right? We're going to do the rematch down in Dallas, Texas. Hey, Dan, real quick question about the fight. What was your reaction when Johnny let George stand up in the fourth round when he was on him and was throwing the elbows and then he just stood up? <laughs> How about when he almost had him knocked out and started wrestling with him? I mean, there was, there was a lot of weird things in the fight. I think there were a lot of missed opportunities for, for Hendricks for whatever reason he didn't finish the fight and it bit him in the ass. You know what I mean? When you're in those positions, you finish. You better finish. You know, he's <laughs> that's why he's like, I'm sitting up here talking about it. He's like, yeah, I was going 70% power. I, you know, I've never been five rounds. But, dude, you're fighting for the fucking title in the stupidest city in the world. You know what I mean? You better fucking knock him out. And look what happened. You don't play around. You don't you, you, you finish that fight. Because Las Vegas will screw you. Because we see that sometimes before where guys will, will hurt somebody in the wrestle. And that, that happens in the sport. But it's rare when a guy is on top of somebody and just stands up. Yeah. Especially I asked him about it. And he said, and, and he could be saying this, but he said that fans wanted to see me not take care of. All right. Do you believe that at all? I and mean, what's your reaction to it? After half the shit he said, I do believe it, yeah. Those elbows were only 30%. He wanted to stand up and hit him with 70%. <laughs> Well, it seems like Hendricks will only get better, and maybe GSP gave everything he had. So it would be interesting if they do rematch. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, he was saying, I've been in this sport for six years. George St. Pierre's had the title for seven years, you know. But, you know, on the flip side, you know, Johnny will get better and, and all that stuff will happen. But George St. Pierre, you know, he, he got through tonight. He got busted up. Who knows? I, I mean, again, we're looking at one of those situations where, when we talked about the rematch for uh, Weidman and Silva, there's still so many questions about Weidman and Silva and how that first fight went down. And you know, you know, tonight you look at this fight and George St. Pierre got beat up. You know, um, I think in the in the rematch, uh, Johnny Hendricks will be a big favorite. What do you think interest will, fan interest will be in the rematch? Because you know, when Pacquiao lost the Bradley, everyone was like, "Well, Pacquiao won." You know, we don't really want to buy a rematch between us two. I mean, in, in well, that's not true. I think people wanted to see a rematch, but they wouldn't do it. They just yeah. they, they went for that Marquez fight instead. You know, you know why they did that. It wasn't that they said, "Well, we beat him." Bradley doesn't draw. Right. That's why they did it because Bradley doesn't draw. So what do we do? We do another fight with Marquez. Because Mexicans sell fights. Yeah. 
We'll sell out the play. Though. Marquez is a big draw, but then also, yeah. like, even though Bradley won, no one really gave him respect for him, and they didn't, they didn't do it. I, I mean, I don't see that happening here, but do you think there, there could be a correlation drawn at all? It's like what, fans are like, well, I don't want to see a rematch because Johnny won the first fight. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. People want to see that rematch, especially, you know, Johnny Hendricks says he went 70%, you know. Is he going to knock George St. Pierre out? Is he going to finish him? Is George St. Pierre going to get over his issues? And was that, you know, what made him so whatever in the fight? Who, who knows? I mean, but th there absolutely has to be a rematch, you know. I don't give a fuck if three people watch that fight. <laughs> there needs to be a rematch. I felt like we had, we had the same conversation in Toronto, though, right? After Jones and Goosen, we were all like, dude, we got to see this fight again. And then we leave. And you're like, well, we were all on a high, you know, and we so we booked this other fight instead. I mean, is there any potential or, like, why is this situation different? Um, well, the, 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 the situation was different with that one because John said, I already beat him. Now I want to fight Gustafsson. I mean, uh, uh, Glover, Glover Teixeira. He goes, I'll give him the rematch mm -hmm. after. You know, John had this plan where he wanted to beat another contender and then he'd do the rematch. The I actually respected again. that. <coughs> Who's George, George going to fight? Had, George said he thought he had three rounds to two tonight. So Devil's Advocate, what if he comes back and says, you know, now that I think about it, I'm, I feel pretty good I beat Johnny. I want to fight who? Winner of uh, Condit and Brown. Well, Con he already fought Condit. I know, but doing well. Johnny deserves this rematch. Every fight is different. You can't look at other situations and go, but in this fight, it was this, in this fight, every fight is different. Johnny Hendricks deserves this rematch. Yeah, Josh Barnett wants that title shot. If he wins the fight in December, is he going to be the next guy, or, or does, would he still need another win? Yeah, well, Cain Velasquez has to fight, and we've been talking about doing Verdum. So he's kind of, you know, whatever happens with him, he's in line behind Verdum, you know? Do you have a preference where Donald Cerrone fights 155, 145? Yeah, I don't like the 145 thing. That kid, I've seen that kid cut weight before and have horrible weight cuts at, at 55. I don't, you know, you you heard me say a million times. I don't care. These kids can do whatever. I don't want that kid going to 45. That there's no get fucking Dolce, get anybody you want to. Nobody's gonna make that 45 cut a healthy cut. There's no way. I don't like it. Huh? Yeah. I thought like when I saw that, I thought like something going to be 45. I, I, like exactly. The kid shredded. He doesn't have an ounce of fat on his body, and and he has you know he has grueling cuts at 55. There's no way he should cut to 45. I, I don't like it. Not that this kid listens to anything I fucking tell him to do anyway, but you know I don't like it and I don't want him to do it. You know, we're talking about the whole 20th anniversary thing. We're talking about the resurgence of the welterweight division right now with GSP, Hendricks, Condit, Brown, now Lawler. Is welterweight, in your opinion, is it still light heavyweight? What do you feel like is the greatest division of the last maybe 10 years? Is it still light heavyweight, or is welterweight making a run for it now? Uh, I think that the... Uh, or lightweight, I guess, maybe. I think the middleweight division's been fun, too. You know, there's been some fun middleweight fights. Uh, you know, some of those fights are what made Anderson the star that he is, that the fight with Shell Sonnen, the second fight with Shell Sonnen, the fight with Vitor Belfort. Um, 205's been great. The heavyweight division was great. You know, I mean, we, we had all those guys. We had the Brock era in there. I don't know. I, I don't know if I could pick one. There's been there's been a lot of great fights in a lot of a lot of the weight divisions. This thing from Hughes, obviously a very dominant champion to GSP, but yeah. then the contenders have always been. 55's been was great too when BJ and uh, you know was uh, was fighting at 55. I don't know if I couldn't pick one division. Too hard. The other day you mentioned that you thought Dominic Cruz could have come back sooner. Yeah. After you made that statement, did you hear from the champ at all? No. Did you? <laughs> no, but I thought I might. But I, you yeah. know, I, I just wasn't sure if he, he ever responded. He knows to I'm that. right. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, did you say that, that after the fight in the cage that St. Pierre's camp was, was talking or acting like they lost the fight? No, they, were, they didn't say anything. But they're oh hell yeah, they were acting like the, you'll see it on my video blog. They they were acting like they lost the fight. They all looked like they wanted to kill themselves. It looked from pressure like, like George went to, to Johnny and said, you got this. But I could just do that. Really. I just wanted <laughs> to get any, any insight to, to what, else they were, what else they were saying. About. He did get it. Johnny Hendricks won this fight tonight. Danny, you, uh, going back to the, the analogy you just drew between Wiseman Silva won and uh, Hendricks GSP won, he made an important point in that with the first Wyden Silva match, we didn't get a lot of questions answered because of some of the decisions that Silva made in the cage. 
tonight, GSP, whether you thought he won or lost, definitely fought the fight. Do you draw a distinction in terms of your level of appreciation for the way GSP approached this fight as opposed to maybe the choices Silva made in the first fight? I appreciate everything about George St. Pierre. You know, George St. Pierre is, you know, I, you know, I came in here, I was pissed because I felt like a kid got robbed. But it does, like I said, George St. Pierre didn't make himself the winner. The judges did. Um, there's just there's not enough good things I could say about George St. Pierre. Um, Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva uh, is a talented freak. I mean, the guy does things to people that other people can't do, and it didn't work out for him that night. I mean, do I think that he played too much? Yes, I think that the first round. I think he got into Weidman's head a little bit, and you know, but but then he kept doing it and doing it into the second round, which you know obviously backfired. But um, and and if he kept doing that, we could have been headed for another Abu Dhabi moment. You know what I mean? If he was able to continue to do that, but Weidman didn't let him do it. Weidman kept pressing the action, kept going after him, and didn't let uh, Anderson get in his head. Do you think it's safe to say that we're not going to see much of that? I think that's part of the fun of this next fight is that I have no idea what's going to happen. I honestly don't, and I think all I keep thinking about, and, and, and I was saying this before the George St. Pierre fight and, and all this stuff, this, I've never been so excited for a fight as I am for Anderson Silva and Weidman. Um, when the lights go down and that music plays and they start walking out, it is going to be crazy. I, I literally cannot wait for that fight. I've never been so excited for a fight ever. And, you know... There were big fights for us. You know, I couldn't wait for Chuck to knock Tito out. Uh, there were a lot of other fights that I was excited for. And I'm never, I've never been this excited for a fight. And certainly Ronda and Misha right before that will probably be pretty great. That won't suck either. <laughs> have, you, have you talked to Kat Zangano lately? Uh, we keep hearing that she's having these treatments, but we still don't know. Is there a timeline I haven't for talked to her. No, I haven't talked to her. The way this thing works is when she's ready to get back, she'll, she'll call us. She'll let us know when she's ready. Does that make the division a little more difficult to deal with? I know we talked in Kentucky with Alexis Davis getting a win, and, you know, everyone always wants to know who the next contender is, of course. So, I mean, I guess that's the question coming up on December 28th. Who it, is the next contender? It always contender? makes it difficult when, you know, it always makes it a little more difficult when people are hurt. Um, look at look at 2012. It's the worst year we've ever had. Um, so, yeah, it's never fun. It's tough. I hate getting that phone call, man, somebody's hurt. You good? Awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Thanks, Dana. Did you lose weight?